So it's your boy, Downsize, and I'm back once again on my block with another hood classic. So this one right here is to answer the question as to why there was beef between Crow and RJ and why Crow never liked RJ. Fundamentally, it's very simple. A lot of people, including Crow, did not believe that RJ's reputation was warranted or that his rise through the ranks, um, it made sense. To them, they saw themselves as having put in far more work than RJ. And a lot of people felt like it was nepotism on his part. It was the fact that he is from Dupervilla Projects. And, you know, there's a lot that goes with that. Um, so there's that to begin with, you know. But that's a that's a prideful thing where... With a lot of people, we feel that way about one another. You know, it's 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 pretty pretty typical that as G's, you know, you go into the system and you know you got someone else, whether he's a homie or not, and you see how you know this particular homie is favored by people for a particular reason because he's related to this Garnal or whatever. You know what I mean? So that was one of the things that made people despise Rick. Now, that's just part of it. Deeper rooted in it is, like I said, the rising in the ranks because it's at that point where Crow and them come into play that the mess has actually created, right? And these dudes, they make, they make a big splash for themselves and they're all out. They, to them, you know, they're bigger and badder than, than Ricky and that generation before them. You understand what I'm saying? It was a changing of the guard and it was a feeling the type of way about one another. And then, you know, RJ was making a lot of moves throughout, throughout, you know, the 80s and whatever, whenever, and 90s that a lot of people didn't agree with. You know, people got to remember that he first bumps head with, with David when David's on his way out. You know what I mean? And there was a lot at play with David stepping out, you know what I mean? Um, and agreeing to fucking hand over the reins when he could have easily fought for the top. And he would have easily been the head. They couldn't see him. They know they can't. None of them wanted to see David, dude. In spite of what people believe these these individual Carnales' reputations to believe to be, they didn't want to fuck with David from the shoulders. Big Spider's probably the only one that from the shoulders because of his, his discipline, his training and shit that could fuck with David like that. But yeah, that's a that's a fucking gladiator fucking battle to the death that it's no guarantee with them two. So, okay, now when Slow steps down, when he gets out in the late 80s, 88, 89, whenever it was, and and there's a restructuring of the mess up because he's stepping out and RJ felt that he should have been he should have been made the head. But because he had been the PC when when he got hit in 80 or whenever it was, 79, when whenever during the taping of 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 Stir Crazy, RJ was stabbed. And and you know, of course they put him in peace, but he came back out. So there was a lot of people that felt like because that happened that, you know, he shouldn't have been made the top. But there was a there was a lot of politicking against RJ being made the top. Crow happened to be one of them who was politicking against him because Crow and 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 Slack Rubin were co-defendants in the in the tuba hit in Cimarron. So they had a they had a they had a murderous relationship, so to speak, them two. They had they had ties and and they were using one another to push to the top. You know what I mean? It's it's that whole favoritism and shit that they play. So this is the power play that was taking place at that point. And, and so Crow is totally against it. He's totally against um, RJ being made top or whatever. Now, going into the 1990s, once Slow's out of the way and he's, he's passed away, then Crow starts seeing an opportunity to, to, to recreate the patch 
he was he was seeing he was seeing an opportunity in being able to restructure the internal security and create another patch around the internal security to actually create another Mexican mafia, a split in itself. He was already attempting to do that from within. That's his purpose. Um, so, you know, like I said, going into the 90s and Crow and I meet, Early 1994, I believe. I want to say maybe January of 94. Um, or late 93, somewhere around. There could be 93. I'm not absolutely sure. Um, but I think it's 93. It's around Christmas time of 93 going in 94. Because I remember we had Christmas packages and I was coming out of VCU. And, you know, at this point, this is when, you know, basically there's 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 this whole push about the drive by ban here. And it's all predicated upon my upon my case, which wasn't even a drive. There weren't drive by shootings. But, you know, like I said, you get you get homies that want to shit on homies, you know, to make a name for themselves. And this is what happens, you know. This is why a lot of us would grow to to resent one another over all this shit. You know what I mean? But so going back to to the whole beef between them. Um, so when Crow and I meet, you know, what I mean, this is this is a re this is the re most relevant issue because they're trying to ban drive bys. You know, there's a lot of politicking going on about this shit. A lot of people, you know, uh, throwing my name out there, trying to fucking build a name a name for themselves as as we're all coming into the system and shit. You know what I mean? And then you got these these old heads want to jump on a bandwagon as if like, do ain't nobody give a fuck about what these fools were thinking anyway? You know what I mean? Because if me, it's like shit. I make it out regardless. You know what I mean? If you motherfuckers want to play gang shit, I got motherfuckers out there to touch you. Shit, I got more. I got more shooters and kids from Duperville Projects that I grew up with on them streets than any one of them motherfuckers had at any given point. That's real shit. That's what was appealing to Crow about the relationship that we had, and especially at the time. And it made sense for him to back my play. It made sense to hold a lot of it at that particular point. Um... And it's actually at that point where the whole big homie brand comes into play because it's a code name that's created by Crow at that point. In reference to RJ, because there was a lot of shit being slung, slung back and forth in back channels, and that became his code name where everybody that was being discussed would be able to identify. Right? Now, this is this 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 would build. This would build. And to the point where, okay, so, and we're in SMU too. Watohead is my neighbor. Um, um, Carnal Boo Boo from VO, Robert Jerez had just left, went home, and, and Indio Remenyamas gets moved into his cell. Okay, at the time, at the time, when Indio comes back on a violation, um, RJ's pushing to have him made a lieutenant. And, and at the same time, Crow is pushing to have uh, Jaime Baby Al made a lieutenant. So there's this clash at the top over these two. Now, I would go to the law library and meet up with Crow and he was he was having me relay messages. He was politicking with them there. And one of the ones he was politicking with there was Watho Head and trying to get Watho Head aside with them. But Watho Head showed no interest in none of it. The weakness that would prevail was already dead set at that point in him. And it's no surprise. And I, it's the same thing with Dirty Dan when I spoke to him out there at, at the law library where... You know, you, he had a total disinterest in everything that was in, in the politics. You know what I mean? He was just, he didn't care one way or another, really, you know. But 
I know that nobody wanted to get caught up in that. You know, and these things are important to note because by the time we get out, like this is shit that's known by Department of Correction. So by the time we get out, when they start, when 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 people start getting sent out of state and everything else, it's no wonder things would play out the way that they did. Because all of these things were already at play before we get to that point. Where me, Paul, Crow, Greyhound, Ninja, we were all on the streets after the fact. So there's a lot to this story. I want people to understand that because like what I'm saying, it's not a secret. People may not know, you know, because they've held, you know, people in such high regards and never saw no flaw in their characters when it came to being gangsters. But it's not the truth. It's not. It doesn't take from what anyone's done or the reputations they hold in that in that in that world. But at the same time, there's a truth. There's a there's a true story and there's there's so many different perspectives of what was actually happening at the time because you know there's so many people involved that have ulterior motives themselves for being involved. You know, whether at the time it's 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 who's gonna be made a lieutenant and all this bickering back and forth and whatnot, you know, to what we see as the final outcomes. But, you know, it's just it's just these things people need to understand that there's greater context. You know, what I mean, and we'll get we'll get we'll get more to you'll you'll begin to understand how we came to this place, because, you know, what needs to be noted. And I'm going to conclude this one with this is that. um I say this all the time. Just because a person was made doesn't mean that they know anything about anything that was happening. I can tell you right now who was privy to those discussions, what Garnales were being politic with when it comes to that. And I, and trust me, it's not the people that have been around like you think. Listen, I'll tell you who was in discussions. Flaco, Monchi. Uh, fucking Wato, uh, Chino, S- no, sleepy, but no. Um, otherwise, there's, there's, Aslan was in on these discussions at one point. Um, different people, depending on the time frames. But I guarantee you, because of the nature of it, I know those people, in spite of how important they felt they were at any particular point, they weren't to the greater to the greater scheme of things. They weren't when it came to their say in the matter. So I'm gonna leave you with that. Peace!